to pack these boxes. Last year they packed 40 boxes. <clears throat> and they love it, they enjoy it. Um, we have some children that cannot afford to pack these boxes. So if you would like to contribute toys, school supplies, non-liquid hygiene items, or if you would just like to contribute funds toward purchasing the items to put in these boxes to, that our children can pack the boxes, that would be very much appreciated. And also the money helps to, uh, to the shipping, you know, to ship these boxes over there. So just to let you know that uh, if you would just like to contribute funds, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Um, uh, also, uh, this is our fifth year to participate with Samaritan's Purse in giving these gifts. Uh, the first year, our goal was 100, and we delivered 104. In 2015, our goal was 125, and we delivered 135. 2016, our goal was 200, and I honestly didn't write that one down. <laughs> but I do remember that we made our goal. Last year, our goal was 300. We gave 266. So this year, I have faith that we're going to meet our 300 goal. Amen. Amen. Um, so y'all, uh, just stop by the table out front uh, and get your boxes and start packing for Jesus and praying for the child that's going to receive it. Uh, also, uh, you know, today when you turn on the news, it's easy to be discouraged by all the hard things that are going on. But Jesus is still good, and God is still at work. And so uh, we want you to take a look at this video just to see how millions of children are affected by these gifts. Thank you, Flo. I appreciate you. <laughs> Please share in that gospel what went to this two box. We want to tell a child that God loves you and He has created you. We've been able to touch the lives of children all over the world to give them a gift and do it in Jesus' name. Moses is making a difference by bringing this joy, but also giving them the true gift, which is Jesus. It's changing the globe. in all ages love packing Operation Christmas Child's Shoebox Gifts. Operation Christmas Child is simply one of the best things going on in the world right now. Operation Christmas Child is carried on the backs of volunteers. They're incredible people. They just love doing it. It's humbling to know that you're taking part in spreading the Word of God to children that you've never even met. You're showing them the love of Christ. It's going to be a lot of happiness. When we pray, God takes your gift and He begins to navigate it. Your gifts are then given to children around the world, and that's only the beginning. After the child receives the shoebox, they are invited to a follow up discipleship program. The Greatest Journey is a 12 lesson program where the child gets an opportunity to learn more about Jesus. It provides a summary of, of the gospel message in a way that a child will be able to engage and understand through a great scanning of children and growing now knowing the Lord. When you give a gift and you give it in Jesus' name, God takes that and multiplies it. Every shoebox is really the beginning of the journey of evangelism and discipleship, and that leads to the multiplication. <laughs> A very small thing, God is touching the world. From the shoebox to the greatest journey, this is the great commission. A shoebox puts a smile on the face of a kid anywhere in the world. For the rest of your life, you remember that box. <laughs> Isn't it incredible to see the impact that these simple gifts are making in the lives of children all over the world? 
millions of children are being blessed, not only by the items in each box, but by your prayers. So thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. We never have enough boxes. We always need more. So please, continue to help and continue to pray. God bless you, and thank you. it on to his son. Yes. This is just ministry around the world. If one child is saved through yes. this, then all our efforts will work. One soul. Amen. Give the Lord any type of praise in the world. We have to remember those that has been on our prayer list. Uh, of course, Brother Ronnie Gross, continue to pray for him. Terry Collier, uh, also, Judy was giving us a praise report about her little niece. But this morning, I have someone who's going to come up and share with you about a documented miracle. She has the proof that God is a healing. And I also have Sister Kim, I want you to come and share your testimony this morning. Amen. celebrity, did you? It was just John at that point. through some things himself, and I finally called, I think it was August 28th, and I got the test results. Everything was completely normal. This chronic disease that they said I had was completely gone. Thanks be unto God, she received her beer. Amen. Gentlemen, if you'll come forth this morning, receive our tithe and offering, go forth in Jesus' name. And before, while they're coming, if you have a need, just lift your hand to the Lord this morning. Great or small makes no difference. I know that God is able. Amen. So, just have faith in God and cry out to God. He is our healer, and we depend upon him for everything. Amen. Amen. Look to your neighbor and say, I declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go for it, gentlemen.
With all power in your hands you have given me A second chance, hallelujah Hallelujah, yeah, yeah, yeah Has it given me a second chance?
the Lord. Can you hear me now? Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here today. <laughs> Look the other way and just tell about time. <laughs> I love the lag. Of the joy of the Lord's our strength, but we've got to be happy. And if laughter is like good medicine, you ought to leave here feeling real well. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Today I want to talk to you. I'm continuing the, the subject. Seems like when God doesn't make sense to us. Sometimes we say, well, if I was God, I you're not. <laughs> you never will be. So quit. You don't have the capability because you're dealing in the flesh and mortal. When his ways are higher than our ways, his thoughts and our thoughts, and the way he does, I, I was telling someone yesterday, Mary, it's this way. We want to see something right now. But God has the end picture in mind. And so too, Get us to that point is the steps and orders of God, not ourselves. Because we might bold. And I'll share with you a little bit later. But it says, when God seems late. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 64. Now, some of the translations are a little bit different, but I put it. Try to in a simple term for everyone can understand. Because I want our children to know that God is faithful. Amen. I want them to be able to understand that there is our help is always in the Lord. So look at this. Oh, that you would burst from the heavens and come down. Oh, he is. We're talking about the rapture in a different day. But how the mountains would quake in your presence, they will. As fire causes wood to burn and water to boil, your coming would make the nations tremble. Then your enemies would learn the reason for your fame. When you came down long ago, you did awesome deeds. Listen to this. Beyond our highest expectation. And oh, how the mountains quake. For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you. Who works for those who wait or him. You need to underscore that. For those who wait for him. Now let me talk to you about personal experience. Every time I got myself in a mess is when I tried, I got ahead of God. Because my reasoning wasn't enough. I, I didn't want to wait. I wanted something to happen right now. And so, therefore, we try to make something happen, but yet, there we're not God. But great things come to those who learn to wait on the Lord. Now, we know the scripture of Isaiah 40, 31. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. The thing of it is, is the promise is always to those that wait and say, God, I'm not taking a step without you. Right. No, I'm, I'm not going to do anything until I know that you're with me and you lead and guide me. Then I'll follow after you and then Kathy, everything falls into place. 
But we sometimes think God is late in our situation. God is never late. He's an on-time God. Every time in the situation that you experience that we get ourselves into. So our problem is we need to learn to wait upon the Lord. And then when he says, now Butch, walk. And Butch walked and the blessings began to just follow after Butch. But Butch has stood through the storm. And Butch has been there when everything seemed to be far away. And Butch wasn't feeling anything, but yet Butch had faith in God. That God is a God who is all faithful to his word. So he stands there even though everybody else said, Butch, you ought to go ahead and walk. Butch is saying, I cannot take a step without he directing my steps. My steps are ordered by the Lord, and I refuse to walk in my will. I will walk after the will of Almighty God. Can somebody praise him in this house? When you learn to wait, the expectancy is unbelievable. And when it happens, you go, wow. Notice with me, if you'll turn your Bibles to Romans Five and four. I didn't give this to them, so it's not their fault. It's the pastors. <laughs> but I never finish an outline that when I get to church, I don't write more verses down. I can't help myself. Romans 5, 1 through 4. New King James Version says this. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom also we have access by faith into his grace in which we stand. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Do we? Knowing that tribulation produces, brother Lyle, perseverance. Mm. And perseverance, character. We go under the banner of Christ, aren't we? <laughs> and if our character matches up with God's word, then it produces hope. It's what the scripture says. And as long as I know that I'm obedient to his word, Jack, and as long as I know that my character is based upon him, then that gives me hope. I know that God is going to show up, and when he shows up, it's going to be big. Amen. Can somebody say hallelujah in this house? Turn over to 2 Peter. Pastor, where's that at in my Bible? Right after 1 Peter. I want to confuse you. Starting at verse 5, Brother Gill says this. But also for this very reason, I'm hooked on Jesus Christ. My faith is in Jesus Christ. My dependence is on Jesus Christ. And so for this very reason, I can't get away from it. I don't want to get away from it. And so Herbert, it says, but for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. And your virtue, knowledge. Some of you got stinking thinking. You got to get rid of that negativity. You got to get rid of all of that junk that pulls you away from the promises of God. Say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And I will not let that enter my mind. I will not let that enter my thought process. I will not let that come on me whatsoever. And so therefore, I rebuke negativity in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you, I do not serve a negative God. I serve a very positive God that promised me that he is going to show up on my behalf. And my problem is me, not God, because God is going to be faithful to his word. And so therefore, i got to fill my mind with knowledge to know what the word of God said. I don't care what the world said. I don't care what the doctors say, Kim. I care what God has to say. And so therefore, I fill my mind with the knowledge of the word of God. I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him. And that is me, Brother Larry, in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody praise him in this house. No matter how you have to be happy up here. Somebody said, you're dragging. I was putting horses and building fence at 2 o'clock this morning.
this morning, what were you doing? I almost got out of the horse business. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> the knowledge. Oh, y'all not going to like this one. Self-control. I don't know what come over me. I do. <laughs> You've got to keep yourself under control. Brother Randy, in every situation, I'm going to tell you what, because the world and the naysayers and all, it's just filling your mind and your heart. You need to quit on God. I'm telling you, Job himself, it was his little wife that come up to him and said, why don't you just curse God and die? He has got balls all over him, and Job, he is scraping those things. He's in pain, and he's suffering. Everything has been taken away but a nagging wife. <laughs> it's in the scripture. Don't you get mad at me. It's in the book. I told you boys I'd give them back. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> Why don't you just curse God and die? You know why she could make a statement? Because she didn't have the same relationship with her husband. And I like Job in the midst of his pain and when his mind is tormented, Brother Kirvin, and his physical health, health is just shot. He turns to him and says, you speak like a foolish woman. He said, yet though the skin worms eat the flesh off of these bones, in this flesh I will see the Lord. He said, I want to tell you, I know the end picture. And the end picture is better than anything you could ever imagine. If God so chooses to take me out of here, I know whom I have believed in. I know where I'm going. And it'll be a whole lot better when I get there. You've got to understand one thing. You've got to keep yourself under control. And you need to quit blaming the devil for everything in your life. Some of you are meaner than the devil and you do it anyway. The devil didn't have to jump start you. You got up, man. Is that the truth? I'll just preach to this wall. Self-control, nobody can get you out of your spot with God but you. They ridicule you, mock you, and everything they want to do, but Jason, they cannot take you out of the place of God that you have a relationship with God. But you've got to practice self-control. I know what everybody said, but you've got to know David Curtis and God is going to show up sooner or later. It might seem late to a lot of people, but God is standing back going, wait a minute, we got 15 more minutes in this tournament and I'm going to let him catch this nine and a half pounder at the very last moment. And old David is so upset. He's walking up down the bass boat. But Brother Kirby, something prods him and he goes ahead and slings the bait out there. And it's the best cast of the day. And God brings a blessing when you don't even expect it. That's how awesome the God is that I serve. He blesses me sometimes when I never expect it. My blessing. I got to read. To self-control, perseverance. Perseverance, godliness. Godliness, brotherly kindness. And the brotherly kindness, love. And that's in the verse 8. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If these things are yours, how do I get them? Ask for them. And God will give them to you. Sometimes it seems that God is late. So that we pray these prayers. Oh, that you would, God. Oh, God, that you would let me win the lottery. But I don't buy tickets. Oh, that 
that you would change them, God, but don't change me. God knows what he's doing. Faith is believing that he's got our best interest in heart. Our all that you would prayers puts us in the season of waiting. But with God, a waiting season is never a wasted season. He's building you, making you stronger, making your faith greater. Then we got these how long prayers. How long, God, will you let them smite me? Kill them, God, today. <laughs> How long, prayers? Habakkuk 1 and 2 says this. How long, O Lord, must I call for him? But you do not listen. Bible says everywhere. I cry that you do not come to say. Now listen to this. They're trying to push their side of spirit. Pat on God. Don't you ever let the devil convince you that God doesn't hear every word that comes out of your mouth. He hears and understands. And he's waiting. But we got a waiting process. I don't like this waiting thing. I go to the doctor. My appointment is at 9.15. I do not want to go in there at 10.45. I come there to go in to see my doctor at 9.15, and we get impatient. So we go up there. If you wait over 30 minutes, you need to come tell the nurse, Hey! I've been out here. Me, around these COVID sniveling children. Now get me in there and see my doctor. I've never done that. I, I thought it in my mind before, amen. But we're impatient. We're very impatient. We don't like this thing of waiting. Because we're on time frame. What did we do before cell phones? iPads? Day planners? What did we do for that? I had a GPS 50 years ago. It's called a road map. Yes. Rand McNally. But yet, David, we survive. We can't go anywhere without a cell phone. I might get a call. We used to find information after we got off work. Right, guys? Remember that day? Oh, y'all old as I am, raise your hand. You right, right. <laughs> Philip, we survived. But now we've become so impatient, Brother Larry. Brother Mike, we got to have everything right now. And you know what? God says, mm hmm. You ever seen that old insurance commercial, that old girl that's got that $1 dangling in the front of her? <laughs> Ooh, almost. You almost got it. God said, Ooh, I almost sent it to you. Amen. Not yet. And you just grab it. John, it's the time that God drops it down and says, Now take it off the hook. It's yours. And Sister Barbara, those prayers that you've been praying for six and a half months till your knees are calloused by your bed and you thought God was not listening, he heard the first time you cried until right now and he finally says, now is the time for the promise to come. Why? Because now everything is lined up in the spirit realm that you did not see, that you did not understand that I'm going to bring it to you right now. That is the beauty of waiting upon God. Amen? Somebody hear me this morning? Story. Father of our faith, Abraham, <coughs> sweet little old wife, Sarah, he's 70, she's 60. Because he's faithful, God says, I'm going to make you a father of a great nation. Your seed will be as the stars of heaven. I promise it to you. He's 70. If Sister Lofton was to come from her doctor, <laughs> guess what? I'm out of here. Amen. <laughs> I'm pre 
used to years ago, the little old lady sitting in the back, she was about 85, and I said, if God promised that she would have a baby, y'all get ready to throw a shot. And she jumped and said, my God. <laughs> He has promised to be the father of a great nation that he is the one that's going to give him the blessing. Wanda, he's 70. She's 60. Don't make any sense, does it? Didn't God got a sense of humor? The 80th birthday comes. He still don't have a boy. Around 90. Rodney, the baby hadn't been given yet. And so then Sarai makes the biggest mistake that we make. She tried to give a blessing that God had promised and said, go into my handmaid. I'm too old. And Abraham went in to the handmaid. And the son was born Ishmael, but that's not the promise. Some of you are settling for stuff that's not your promise. Some of you are trying to go ahead and interfere with what God has promised. You did not make the promise. God did. God said, I'll give you a son. And after him, I'm going to build a nation that's going to be like the stars of heaven. And if you can number them, that's how much a seed will be. And that wasn't the case. 90 years old. Sarah comes out and goes, morning sickness, out of the tent. Something's wrong with her 90-year-old body. For she has conceived. Why? Because God promised it. But that's impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. And if he has promised a seed, and he has promised a holy one, I'm telling you he'll deliver it. Can you imagine a hundred-year-old daddy walking around the gates of the city going, Hey, boys, I just had a bouncing baby boy. They would lock you up today. <laughs> but he took that promise. And took it in his hands and raised it up to God. Why? Because God is faithful. If God has promised it, God will bring it to fruition in your life. But you better wait. Somebody praise him now. You need to quit detaining the promises by trying to do things on your own. Wait. And receive the promise of God. Amen. Look at your name and say, you've got to wait to receive. I'm going to quickly. Oh my. I'm just now on page two. I'm going to give you two reasons God uses in the waiting season. Number one. To increase your faith. Now, a few weeks ago, I shared with you about when the disciples was in the boat with Christ and they're about to go under, but they forgot what he said. Now, be quick. Let us go to the other side. The sea cannot see. See the creator. He's the one that made dry land appear and pushed the firm of the waters back. He said, we look, let us That can't sink in your mind. Let us go to the other side. Well, Brother Lewis, if Jesus said it, I'm going to hang out with him. I don't care if he's asleep or not. I know we're going to go. And what gets me, there are a bunch of people that is very knowledgeable of the sea. The devil causes you to fear things that you know better than the devil. Finally, they wake him up. He rebukes. First, I like how he does it. He rebukes the disciples. That's the first rebuke, if you understand. Oh, you of little faith. Get that life jacket. 
vest off here. That rubber duck ain't going to save you and that little blow-up pony. I'm the master. And he rebukes the wind and the waves and everything else. But we try to prepare for the worst when God has got the best for us. Anybody hear me? Oh, you better get some of this. Have you ever been in a terrifying, disturbing situation that seemed like God was asleep? He's not. He's not. He's waiting. You'll see how much faith you got. And I want to tell you what, he'll show up. And he'll rebuke everything that's come against you. But the first thing he's going to do is steal your spirit. I don't know about you, but every now and then I, I need my spirit. Just remind me how great you are. What I'm seeing, but yet we're not seeing what he's seeing. So you understand, you've got to wait on. Many times it's between our human deadlines and our heavenly deliverance when our faith grows the most. So he uses this to increase our faith. Number two, Angela Connor. I love this one because <clears throat> it's to increase our story. Every one of you is a story. Some of you are bestsellers. <laughs> Some are not, but anyway. Uh, but we're story. I used to work with the funeral director that's here in town. And, and I would never forget we did a funeral. And he got up and spoke. We went to high school, or we went to school together in elementary. And he got up and told the crowd, he said, your life is like a book. From Ryan every day a page is written. <coughs> Put in the Ryan Raspberry story. Go Jacks, I know. And he'll get up tomorrow and finish that day. He has written another page. <coughs> Joe, some books are short stories. Some just have a title. <coughs> but some are large volumes. I would go over here and I'd pick up this book and I'd point it up and it says Gail Melton. That volume's big. There's a lot of people that impress you in your life. I got two old guys been with me a long time and I love you guys more than you'll ever know. And y'all really. Thank you for tolerating me when I couldn't preach a lick. Still can't, but still thank you for letting me hang around. But in there, I would see when you had a visitation from the Lord. On many occasions, how God showed up being for you. He wants to increase our story. Not Rick Raspberry, just barely made it in. But he wants to bring it. Raspberry to be a giant killer. And walk through the gates of that city with a head in the middle. Just to increase the story. When Mary and Martha's brother Lazarus was sick, Jesus waited to go to him on purpose. He waited on purpose to go to one of his best friends. <laughs> and the disciples even said, Jesus, Lazarus is sick. Shouldn't we be going? He said, not yet. And when he gets there, the first one he encounters is Martha. And listen to what Martha said. <clears throat> Still holding, I'm in the faith. If you would have been here, he wouldn't have died. But she's having all the trouble comprehending why he didn't come. And so one day he tells her, he says, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. 
I want to increase the story. I could have got here four days ago and deal with it. But I'm going to increase the story, hey, because I didn't come for the healing. I come to resurrect it to show you that we have power over death. Yeah. Where have you laid it? Mary, take me to the tomb. Larry, when they get there, roll back the stone. I just didn't come four days ago so you would just pass off a healing as just one of another little miracle. But I'm fixing to increase your story, Morgan. I'm going to increase your story to show you that I'm not just a God that heals, but I'm a God that resurrects. Somebody better hear me in this house this morning. I'm not just a God that can heal you. I'm a God that's going to raise you from the dead. Lazarus. I don't know who Lazarus was talking to. He may have been there going, you had a baby at 100 years old, huh, Abraham? How was that? <laughs> I said, you the kid tried to kill you, did he? No. Dad was just being obedient to the Lord. But God provided a ram for sacrifice. He's a faithful God. And all of a sudden he hears his name. So evident he has to say, Wait, guys. Lazarus! Come forward. And here he comes out of there with the grave clothes on. And I like what he says. Loose it. Take that junk off of it. Let me tell you what God is telling the devil in some of your lives. You take the junk off of them now. I have brought them forth from death to life. You take the junk off of them. I have come that they can have life and have it more abundantly. I come to raise them from a path of death to a path of life. I came to increase their story. Anybody hear me this morning? God wants to increase your story. The devil wants to just put you in bondage. But God wants to increase your story. Every family in here, you have struggles, trials, problems. You've been through stuff, and you've often wondered, I wonder if he's listening to me. Let me give you a scripture. You don't think God's got his eyes on you? He said his eyes run to and fro, Doc, around the earth watching us. But he also says, he sees the sparrow when he falls to the earth, Travis. And if he can see the little things of what's going on them, I like what he said, Tom, how much more does God watch you? He's listening, Jimmy, to every word you've ever said. Steve, you've never cried out that he didn't hear you. But God just wants to increase his story not the mundane and not the one of unbelief, but one that says, I know God is able to do all. Would you bow your head today, Savior? I come to you in your lovely, lovely name, the name of Jesus. And your word says that you're the author and the finisher of our faith. But if you're the author, you're the only one that can write on the page. You know me like no one else knows me. You even knew me before I was formed in the womb. And you know my name is written down in heaven. So author, begin to pin on pages to increase our story. Just like Sister Kim Rose got healed, miracle. Let that go in the book. But say, there's some here that's in struggle. There's some here that is in bondage. And I ask you to set them free today. While every head is bowed, every eye is closed, if you have a need you need Jesus to help you with, or even to increase your faith, I want you to quickly come to this front. Quickly. I will not hold you long.